Hi everyone, it's Holly and it is a July 4th weekend. It's Sunday and I'm technically off this weekend, but I just have a wild hair to make some soap and I thought maybe you'd like to come along. And I thought we'd also take a look at the studio before I start packing orders for the Rainbow Extravaganza. So over here, right inside the door, I have some bulk oils. I made a big order from Bulk Natural Supplies. I have some more liquid oils here and the racks are all empty except for this one which is just some odds and end business there. I've already got my essential oils figured out for today in my recipe and this is where I make my wax stuff and prep for my soap batches. This is the main kitchen area. I still have some samples, that, samplers and gift boxes that I need to move, some dishes to put away. I spent the day Friday just organizing and cleaning and just getting it all figured out. So if you saw my stories a week or two ago, I don't know when I posted them, but I found a couple of brambleberry boxes in amongst my bulk supplies that I hadn't been into yet. So it'll be interesting to see what's in there for sure. So there is my new mini split. Oh my goodness, it makes such a difference up here. Let's listen. That's the air conditioning now. It is just brilliant and wonderful. So let's do, so here we have the little gift sets there. There weren't very many because of the one, one of a kind flower picks from um, Jody with Gording Around and those are all the soap samplers. Whole bunches of them and I do still have some left. This is typically where I, well, not typically, it is where I keep all my bath bomb things and this is where I'm going to get to packing here on Tuesday, my packing station. And um, I have a couple of packages getting ready to go. I've got my samples ready. And so we had a window unit and that's been taken out and I have so much light now, but I do need to definitely work on trim. That is the one thing that we have not done and we've been here now for six years. So it's, it's time to take a break from working and work on trim stuff. So here we have everything. It doesn't look like it should all fit here, but it does just all the products from the rainbow extravaganza so here we have just the computer where we do all the printing and all the things and my son will be pulling orders and getting them all here on his table for me so I can just easily grab them I want to go ahead and get my light solutions going and cooling so I'm gonna suit up for safety get my goggles on and I'm going to put my gloves on, I've got my sleeves on, etc. I'm going to go ahead and share the recipe today um, intended for experienced soap makers. If you've never made soap before, I recommend learning some of the basics from Love and Soap and from Brambleberry. They both have really good like intro, um, you know, learning and you have the Nerdy Farm Wife and this this video does not take the place of your prior knowledge to get to this point to make soap because you do need to research and really understand how to handle lye and soap and all the things so i just wanted to say that so i need distilled water today i am going to be using 50.4 ounces and this is another thing you always need to run a recipe even shared through a light calculator don't ever 100% trust somebody who is sharing a recipe with you that there's not been a typo or someone has misspoken so that's just very important that you learn a light calculator and you well I did not have enough you do need to learn how to use a light calculator etc so we're going to do 
what did I say? 50.4, so I need to take a little bit back. I'm doing two batches exactly the same, so not a big deal, but I do have like a blue marker so that I can tell the difference from my pictures. It's super hot outside and the mini split has already turned itself off. This thing is amazing. Now, to make soap, absolutely, you have to use lye. There's no getting around it. If it's soap, it's made with lye. So, um, I do like to get from Essential Depot. I think it's super good quality and the best pricing that I have found, but you don't wanna breathe this in. Be really careful that you don't get it on your skin or in your eyes or anything. Super duper important to wear goggles. We have all sort of, sorts of the poison information here on the side. So I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to mix and move on. 5 solution cooling in front of the fan and I've gone ahead and measured out my hard oils it's just easier to do it this way and then I'm going to put them on and melt them pour it out and then I'll have to melt the second batch now I haven't mentioned what I'm making today I am making a tallow soap and it's not 100% tallow it's going to have actually only 20% tallow but this batch is gonna have olive oil tallow coconut oil, cocoa butter, and castor oil. So let's give it a go. I'm going to put in the tallow and it is very hard. Not as hard as say a butter, but it's still quite hard. Oh we've got tallow in. Going to put in the coconut oil. I guess we're kind of close, you're not seeing them whole bunch. This is a 210 ounce batch. I have um, calculated it for a little bit of a, a smaller batch. I want to cut them into smaller bars. They're not going to go in my standard boxes and everything. So there's the coconut. All right, And then I love my cocoa butter wafers. Go in with those. So, so far, 20% beef tallow, which was 42 ounces, 15%, oh, only 15% coconut oil, I forgot I did that, for 31.5 ounces, and then, 20, let's see, 10% cocoa butter, which is 21 ounces, I was jumping around. So, I'm going to go put this on a little, I don't know what you call those things, uh, anyway, just like a little portable burner thingamajigger and I'm going to melt this down.
gonna go ahead and measure out my liquid and add it to this first batch of hard oil so that it can start cooling it down. I'm using sodium lactate today at 3% and even though I'm putting it in my oils, it is actually coming from my water portion. So I reduced the amount of water that I mixed with the light solution to accommodate the sodium lactate. And the sodium lactate just really hardens up a soap and makes it feel amazing. It's one of my favorite things. So I need 6.2 ounces. Oh, there we go. I will still need this in a bit. For castor oil, 10%, 21 ounces. So what castor oil does is helps to create bubbles. It's so good. It's one of my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that in. And then I need 45% olive oil, which is 95 point, no, 94.5 ounces. And I just have a big bucket, so this one is almost empty, but I'm gonna have to heft a big one here soon. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this one, I'm gonna scrape out the bowl, and I think my other ones are about ready, about melted, the other hard oil, and then I will do this as well. And then I'm probably just gonna take a break for lunch. So both of these are gonna have essential oils. This one is peppermint, and this is uh, cedarwood, atlas, and fir needle. I'm going to anchor both of them with some kale and clay. So I'm gonna put in a couple of tablespoons. And just let that oil, get that all absorbed. Get the, get that clay, get the oil absorbed. Oh goodness. And then I'm just gonna mix it in, kinda let it do its thing and break down. Now kale and clay is thought to anchor essential oils. I don't always use the kale and clay, but I am going to use it today. Since these batches have a higher percentage of hard oils, I'm gonna soap a little bit warmer today. I already had one of these solidify a bit on me, so I'm going to soap a bit warmer. And I'm gonna use heavy cream powder. Now, the reason why I'm using this today is because even though I do have cream, it's got other stuff in it, like, what's that name, carnegian, etc. Anyway, this is just straight dehydrated heavy cream, and so I do enjoy using it. I'm gonna use two tablespoons. I want this to have a little bit of a green color, so I have some spinach powder from Brambleberry. I do love spinach powder to color naturally. Use a couple of tablespoons of this as well. Not looking for a dark color by any means. I just want a little color. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these blended in. I do have just a little bit of lilac, and that's just a natural reaction from the sodium hydroxide to the carbon dioxide in the air, which creates, I'll put it on the screen because I don't remember the words at the exact moment. 
This is quite a bit reduced because this is just going to be a single color. So normally I soap at a 30% lye concentration. Had to go check my notes, but today it's 33.3, which is two to one. So that's why there's a little bit more lilac than I've had as of late. And this is at room temperature. which is approximately 71 degrees. So not only was it reduced to the 33% lye concentration from what I normally use, but I've also removed that sodium lactate from that number as well. So I'm just bringing it to emulsification right now. And then I'm gonna stir in this essential oil blend. I get as much of that kaolin clay in there as I can and then I just want to bring this to a trace I initially set out today for this just to be a fur needle soap, but I realized it did not have enough of the essential oil. So I do have it on order. I've been buying a lot of essential oils recently. I just, after big rainbows and Christmases and everything, I always wanna make essential oil and unscented soaps. We're starting to get it a trace. I think I kind of want to watch it and see what happens because I am soaping a little bit warmer so it could come to a trace much quicker here, especially with the reduced water. And I don't want it to be too thick when I pour. All right, it's starting to come to a trace it has only been just a moment. Oh yes, this is looking good. I think it's time to pour. All right, so let's go ahead and pour this beautiful soap. It smells so good, so earthy, foresty. That looks about right for the smaller bars that I'm wanting to do. I think I may move to some just overall smaller bars just because with everything getting so expensive, I want it to be a little more affordable for you. And if I do a little bit smaller bars, then maybe you could try a couple of different things instead. I've always had a fairly chunky soap bars and we love them but I've gotten some soaps in from Lovely Body in Canada and Ellen Ruth and a lot of those bars were just quite a bit smaller and I did really enjoy them so 
we're going to try some smaller bars for a little bit, I think. With, like I said, with everything being so darned expensive nowadays, be one way to be able to try more soaps. Oh, look how nice and thick that is now. I do just want this to have just a very plain top. I don't want them to be... Might, might give it a, just a little bit since that's what it's kind of doing as is. A lot of my bar size is just based on the boxes and the boxes are got have gotten so expensive so I'm thinking about going back to where I've wrapped with some paper. It's always so attractive and I love it when these other makers use it so I think I may do that for just a little while. We'll see. I don't know. I feel like making a few changes right now. Alright, so I think we'll be done with this one and on the screen it's coming across a little bit more yellow than I think it actually is, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to get ready, clean this up, and get ready for the next batch. So this one is just going to be a plain peppermint, but I'm going to go ahead and add in the heavy cream powder again. So another couple of tablespoons in this one. Isn't that cool? I don't know if you can see that super well, but I don't know, it just looks awesome. All right, so I'm going to get this blended in again. And then I'm going to add in the lye solution. The lye lint is going right in because it is fresh and it's not crunchy as I would call a, a day old lye. These are nice and soft so they'll just break down and it's A-OK. -okay, completely good to go. And again I'm going to bring this to emulsification. Now this one was just a little bit warmer because I had to reheat it so it didn't have as long to cool back down, especially in this stainless steel. So it was at 106. And again, it's not really that big of a deal with what I'm doing today. If I were doing, you know, swirls and all the things, then it'd be a little bit more of a situation. And I'd want it to be a little bit cooler. Okay, so let's get this peppermint essential oil in. And I like to use eocalc.com for usage rates and um, blends and everything. It's a really good website. And again, we're going to bring this to a trace. So you can see I still have plenty of time to work with this even though the temperature was a little bit up. This is a really nice recipe. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get my stick blender cleaned off here. Because I can tell it is about as thick as 
the last one was when it was time to pour. You can see that it's a nice trace. Nice. We're getting we're at a medium. It's not thick, but it's getting there. Okay. Oh yeah, this is a little thicker than the last batch, but it's no problem at all. Oh, it smells amazing. My daughter adores peppermint, so that's why I decided to do this one today. It's kind of like my boys want the fir needle and the cedar wood, and she loves the... It's getting a little thick there. She loves peppermint, so I thought this would just be super good for my kiddos and of course my husband and I too. I don't know if I'll be listing them or not. Depends on how much we decide we like them. Okay, I want to smooth that out a bit. So smacking it down pops the air bubbles. Just kind of helps to level it out. So I think I'll just, I don't want them to be, hmm. I don't want them to be high. So I think I'm not really gonna pick up my spoon. I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it around and have a little texture on top, a little interest, but nothing major now I don't know what I'm gonna do here I don't know if I will stop the video here and just upload and then once I cut and everything then perhaps I will do the second part is what I'm thinking because I bet this video is kind of long already so we'll see you'll just have to stay tuned to see if I end it or if I keep going I'm not done with this video I'll be back for another part Okie doke. So here they are. We have the spinach powdered colored fir needle and cedar wood essential oil and the peppermint essential oil. So I just love how creamy and beautiful this one is. So I'm going to try to do this one handed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray with some 99% alcohol. And this is going to help prevent the soda ash from forming. Give it a fairly liberal spray. Okay. And then I just have some whoa, whoa, little uh, cardboard pieces that I got some like parchment paper in. They have like a little plastic on them so I can just clean them right up. I'm gonna cover those up like so. So I am just going to weight these down so that it um, makes more of a seal that will help. And then I will be back to unmold them once they've had a good amount of time, maybe just under 24 hours before I unmold them. Um, but they do need the time to go through saponification and to solidify and to do its thing. So I will see you back here to unmold.